central bank in Namibia um, is quite strict in its uh, regulatory um, uh, requirements uh, and uh, then the banks themselves as well uh, in particular our bank um, has the uh, this particular reputation of being fairly conservative in its lending policies which I think has come to stand us in very good stead at this point in time uh, that our um, non-performing ratios are well below uh, industry standards. Uh, we are not, we have no exposure whatsoever uh, to these toxic assets um, internationally at all. And uh, that's why uh, we remain unaffected by what uh, has happened um, internationally. There's a, there's a, uh a domestic asset requirement for banks of 90%. So it means that 90% of the assets of banks uh, must be in Namibia. So only, you're only allowed to, to, to have 10% out of the country. So they pretty much involve um, in the local economy. The consensus is that the financial services sector is sound and will stay that way. And the Development Bank of Namibia seems to agree, which is why it's looking to increase its loan book to over 1 billion Namibian dollars this year and is plowing in over 42 million into the micro lending space. Here we are not looking at uh, those microfinance that are for consumer orientated but for useful uh, kind of developmental uh, impact analysis and that is with regard to enterprise development, housing, education, renewable energy and so forth. While the stock market might not be as vibrant as its South African neighbour, local Namibian stocks have performed remarkably well compared to their South African counterparts. Well, it was started in 92, just after independence, and it got a boost in 94 when Regulation 28 was amended to force pension funds to buy stocks on the Namibian Stock Exchange to comply with Regulation 28. And it, it ticked along quite nicely until, and, and the statistics that, that I've extracted for, for today, we started in 2000. We, we had a, quite a... Um, boost through a company that subsequently um, went insolvent, Namco, and from 2003 we had a phenomenal growth of 280% until the 11th of October 2007, and since then the market has now decreased by 50 odd percent. So our growth from 2003 to 2009 is 105 percent. The local stocks, however, have grown a lot better than that, and they've gone up um, in leaps and bounds, even with the um, financial crisis of the last year, the local stocks have shown resilience and haven't shown any declines at all. And even though South African industrial conglomerate Bidvest expects a tough second half in 2009, it says it's still got plans to list on the Namibian Stock Exchange. Meanwhile, one local Namibian financial services company that's spreading its wings is Trusco. With a market cap of 51 million US dollars, Trusco is the fourth largest listed company on the NSX. The company specializes in everything from property and education to microinsurance. And in a country as big and as sparsely populated as Namibia, diversifying your business is certainly the way to go. Namibia is a very large country, but, but it's got only 2 million people. And um, in Namibia, basically, to do a business just in one sector. Um, we think there's an inherent risk in it. Um, say for instance, you're only in the agriculture sector and it doesn't rain. What do you do? Your whole business is, is, is basically under threat. So um, firstly, we've diversified. And secondly, um, our business is, is really dovetailed. The one fits into the other. Trusco was the first company to list on the JSE's New Africa board as part of its expansion plans. It sold 65,000 shares within the first three minutes of trade at a price of 72 cents.